Now it's going to be as good a time as any to implement our interfaces. We have them already created in the Blueprints folder and the Interface folder, so if we go into these, uh, we can start actually creating the functions. I have said that this playlist will expect kind of a base knowledge understanding of Blueprints and Unreal, and I'm aware that not many tutorials or projects seem to really emphasize the use of interfaces, so I will spend a little bit of time just explaining how they're used uh, the benefits and the best way that I find to use them. Some of this is personal preference, uh, but I will explain why I do certain things. So this may be a little bit more descriptive than other tutorials in this playlist, just because it's a less covered topic. So apologies if you already know all of this, but I want to make sure that everyone can follow along fairly comfortably. So if we go into the game state interface, first of all, like I said, it automatically creates a function for you because it needs at least one function to be a valid interface. Now this one, it just called the uh, new function new function zero. So we can rename this. I'm going to call this one selected headpiece. So this is going to be the function that when we have chosen a headpiece that we want the character to use, uh, we're going to pass this information to our game state. Now at the moment, the game state doesn't know anything about this. So we need to open up the game state as well. And the way that you add an interface to a class, if you haven't done this before, I'm going to go to the class settings at the top up here. And we can see over on the right hand side, we have the implemented interfaces it currently says no interfaces. So if we go to the add drop down and type in BPI. So this is one of the reasons that I like to give the naming that prefix is because it's very easy to find the ones that we create then. So we've got blueprint interface uh, and we want the game state version. So this has now added the BPI game state and all of its functions, which is currently one, to our actual game state class. So if we hit compile and save, we can see that nothing really changes. And we do have an interface section, which would be down here. And the way that we get that to show is by adding at least one function in the BPI game state or the interface class with a return value. Now, this is one of those things that I said is going to be kind of my personal preference. But even if a function doesn't need to return anything, I will always add at least a Boolean return. And if it doesn't have any value or any use, then I'll just call it return. Now, that way I know that this is just here for visual values and readability, really. So I'm going to compile and save this and then go back to the game state. And by doing this, we can now see that we have an interface dropdown and it will show us the function selected headpiece. And this acts like a function that you would create over here. So you can actually go into this and add your own logic in between here and the return value. Now, the great thing about this is that we know that we can just ignore this Boolean because it's called return. And I say that I had something which was doing a true false check. Is the character wearing a headpiece? Then I would call that return B is wearing headpiece or something. So I know that by the end of this return, I need to give that a true or false. But by just calling it return, I know that it's here just so that it appears in the interface. Uh, and that means I can put the logic in here. Now, the other way is if, if we didn't have this, what we would have to do is refresh this so that this goes away. Uh, I may have broken things by doing that, but otherwise you'd have to come in and treat this like a custom event. So you'd need to get an add event selected headpiece and all of the logic off here. And I like to keep things out of the event graph as much as possible. Uh, just for cleanliness and code readability. Okay, so I'm going to add this back in, add the return back in, so we have this over here as a function. Okay, so that was pretty much the most long-winded bit. We can now just go through. The rest of this is like any other function, now that we know why that I'm doing that bit, because I know I'm going to get questions on that, and probably people telling me why not to do it, but that's fine. In the inputs, we want to pass in the headpiece that has been selected, so we already have our enumeration for this. So if we search for E headpieces, and we'll call this one headpiece. Now, we also know that each headpiece has a cost assigned to it. So whenever we have a selected headpiece, we probably want to know how much it costs. So I'm going to call this one cost. And this is just going to be an integer. We don't need to worry about the structure. We'll get the information from any classes that is relevant with this. Uh, we'll get the information from the structure in that class. And we'll just and we'll just pass around the final cost value. So we can hit compile and save. And again, we can just check. So now whenever we call this function, we can pass in the headpiece and its cost. We can do the logic that we need to here, which we'll do in a future video. And this is all now nicely housed away. Okay, so if we go back to the BPI game state and add the other two functions. So the other two that I know that we're gonna need, we want to get the save data. So we're gonna go back to the widget class soon. And one of the things we want to do is find out which headpieces are available, what they cost, things like that, so that we can update the button. So we want to get the save data from the game state. Now, this one doesn't have any inputs. It's purely returning the information 
from the save file. So this is one of the examples where we actually do need some outputs. We want the funds, which are available. So that's an integer value. We want the owned headpieces, which will be our E headpieces, but as an array. And we want the currently worn headpiece. So we'll turn this back to a single variable and rename it to currently worn headpiece or just currently one piece. And then the final function we want is when the player collects a coin or something, or what we're gonna class as funds a bit later, uh, we're gonna add that function as well, which is just called add funds. Now this is another one I want it to be a function, I want it to appear. So I'm just going to add a Boolean and call it return. We don't need to pass anything in, although uh, because I'm just gonna set a default value of 200 funds per pickup, but of course, if you had different things, uh, imagine a game like Spyro where different gems cost or are valued differently, you might want to add an input, which is the amount or the type of gem that was just picked up. Uh, and then you'd add funds like 200, 50, 100, depending on what you picked up. Uh, but for this, just nice and simple, we just need something to purchase the objects with. So we'll leave this as a flat 200. So now in the game state, we have, um, if that worked properly, uh, we just needed to hit compile there, although it said it had compiled. We have all three of our interface functions ready to call. So now any other class that needs to either get save data or add funds to it, if we just go to the player as a quick demonstration, we're not gonna keep this code, but I just want to show you again how interfaces work if you've not used them. So let's say that on begin play in the player class, we want to find out what headpiece we're wearing. What we would do is the usual event would be to get game state, and then we'd say cast to bp underscore game state. Uh, we'd then break this down, we'd get the save data that way. So this is the cast method. So we'd do it that way, wouldn't we? Uh, that's a standard cast. But we can skip that because we have the interface. What we can do is we can just do the interface call. So we don't need to know what type of game state this is. We don't need to cast to a specific blueprint class. We can just say get save data. Okay, so we're gonna pass a message to the current game state, regardless of what the game state is. We're gonna say, get the save data for me. Can I have the funds, what I'm wearing, and the headpieces I own? Uh, now, we can tell this is an interface call because it has this little message sign up here. And this is actually very safe because this will do one of two things. If the game state has the interface implemented, which we've done through the class settings, then this will return the information. It will go in to this function, the save data function, and it will return whatever we pass in just here. If the game state doesn't have it, then nothing will happen. There won't be any null references, there won't be any issues of uh, invalid data. So using interface is actually, again, a positive because it's safer this way. Now it does mean that when you're debugging, it can be a little bit confusing, which means that whenever you do that, whenever you do this, especially before you have confirmed that it's working, you may want to do some print strings just to confirm that you're getting the information, things like that. So it does add potentially an extra debugging step. But other than that, it's very, very safe because like I said, it either returns the data or it doesn't. Whereas again, with casting, if you're casting to a class which may not exist or may not have been set up correctly, then you will get null references and some issues like such um, if you're still trying to get information from that. This again bypasses loading all of the classes into memory. This will just do the message, return the data if it has it and not return it if it doesn't. So that is how you use an interface. We're gonna be using that a lot more in the future, but because we're not quite there yet, I didn't want to just leave this kind of as a question on people's minds of how we actually use the interface we've made. Okay, so before closing down this tutorial, we're just gonna go back to the BPI underscore player interface as well. We're gonna add a new function here. We're gonna call this one toggle headpiece. This has an input and an output. So the input will be a Boolean and we're just, just gonna call this one B next. So this will be for, again, the menu system. Uh, when the menu has the previous next button, this is gonna make a call to the player to tell it to update the static mesh, which is currently representing the headpiece. And this will be done by using an output which is going to be of type E headpieces. So we'll get E headpieces and we're gonna call this one current headpiece. So we're gonna do some uh, byte, simple sort of byte maths in the menu system. So we're gonna get the, what the current headpiece is, which will be none. Then if you press next, we know that the next headpiece will be hair one. If you press next again, it'll be hair two. If you press previous, then it'll go back a byte and it will be hairpiece one. And then back another byte would be hairpiece none and so on. So that's how this is gonna work. So that's why we're using uh, whether we're pressing next or not. Uh, so that will all make sense in the widget class when we start using that. And the final thing, we want one final function, which will be our pickup collected. Now, again, this is going to be used so that when we have our pickup class, we don't need to cast to find out whether we have touched the uh, BP underscore player. We're just going to 
send a message to the player to say that a pickup has been collected um, and we need a boolean return for this reason and again this isn't going to be an empty return this will be actually used so i'm going to call this one be collected so if the player class is the one that actually has this me message sent to it then we're going to make sure that we return true and that is going to be what causes the collectible to delete itself or destroy itself and say that we have falling debris or something and that collides with the collectible. Obviously we'll make sure that that doesn't have the interface, so it'll return false. And that means the collectible won't be collected by anything other than the player. So nice and simple. And again, final step is we're gonna to go to the player class, go to class settings, and make sure that we give this the interface of player. So the BPI underscore player interface. And we can see we now have our pickup collected and toggle headpieces functions ready to go through the interface classes. Okay, so that is Blueprint interfaces. We're gonna make use of two of those in this project. We have fleshed out the functions for those so they're ready to go, and we should be able to start making use of those very soon. I'll leave that video here for now. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, if you want to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel, do consider subscribing, and remember to click the bell notification to make sure you actually get those updates. As ever though, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.